the lazy Prio. MOBA, otherwise known as Multiplayer Online Battle Arena. Currently it's the largest, most profitable and heavily spectated gaming genre in the world. And it all started from a mod called Aeon of Strife in Blizzard Entertainment's StarCraft RTS. Over the years the mod was recreated and refined in Warcraft 3, where it was eventually popularised with a version of the mod called Defense of the Ancients All-Stars, or Dota, which was estimated to have had over 10 million unique players at one point or another. This was a big deal considering it was just a fan-made mod supported and maintained by a dedicated community. Eventually, gaming studios such as Riot, S2 Games and Valve began work on making their own Dota-style game, hiring many of the modders from the original Dota community. A few years after Dota became popular, a few studios had released their own version of the game, but they'd all been massive failures in comparison to the original. Until Riot Games released League of Legends in 2009, which at the time brought a totally new business model into the gaming industry, where the core game was free to play, but you had the choice to pay for heroes that weren't on the free roster for that week. The game was a huge success and quickly gained an active esports scene. Riot were the first studio to refer to games inspired by Dota as MOBAs, which has stuck for the majority to this day. Around one year after the release of League of Legends, S2 Games released Heroes of Nua, otherwise known as Hon, to try and compete in the genre. Hon's mechanics were very similar to that of the original Dota, however they had a very different business model to League of Legends, which made it hard for them to truly compete. Hon went free to play one year after release but had its best player numbers whilst the game was in its free beta stage. In 2010 Valve announced they were working on making Dota 2, and the project would be led by a developer called Icefrog, the guy that was responsible for the success of the original Dota All-Stars. Around the same time, Blizzard Entertainment announced at their BlizzCon 2010 event that they'd be working on their own MOBA, under the name Blizzard Dota, which they had various problems with from the outset. Eventually the project went through a massive overhaul as the game was said to have been too complex, which went against the typical Blizzard design philosophy of making games that are polished, fun and highly accessible. Blizzard's MOBA went through a few name changes such as Blizzard All-Stars, whilst various companies were fighting legal battles for the rights to the name Dota. In the end, Valve won the rights to Dota and in 2013 released Dota 2, which has been extremely popular and has a large dedicated esports following, rivalling that of League of Legends. Shortly after, Blizzard released the reveal trailer for them over at BlizzCon 2013, calling it Heroes of the Storm, which has been in its testing phase for around a year and a half with the full release expected mid-2015. Since the popularisation of MOBAs, there's been many studios that have tried to replicate the success of the juggernauts of the genre, and some have been relatively successful, such as Smite, Infinite Crisis and Strife. Smite takes an interesting approach to the genre by being the first popular third-person MOBA, which was possibly inspired by Monday Night Combat released in 2010. However, despite the success of a few companies, many have failed being known as Dota or League of Legends clones. So how will Blizzard Entertainment's Heroes of the Storm compete in a climate where hundreds of gaming studios are fighting for dominance in an oversaturated market? Well, let's take a look. Heroes of the Storm takes a totally different approach to the genre. In typical MOBAs, players must farm as much gold as possible to buy items in order to become more powerful. Players can earn gold in various ways, such as destroying towers, killing enemy heroes, but mostly through last hitting mobs. Last hitting is something that involves you getting the last hit on an enemy minion before it dies. Games such as Dota 2 added further complexity to this system by adding the option to deny minions. This is where you get the last hit on your own minion to prevent the enemy team getting a last hit. In Heroes of the Storm, last hitting, farming gold and buying items to become more powerful is a thing of the past. Instead, all of the heroes on your team level up at the same time based on the amount of experience you've gained. If your team's earned more experience than your opponents, then that's going to put you at an advantage when going into team fights. Another thing to note is at the start of the game you have all of your basic abilities unlocked. Typically in MOBAs, abilities are unlocked as you level up, eventually giving you the option to put multiple points on the same ability to make it more powerful. In Heroes of the Storm you unlock talents at certain levels, which you can either use to spend on new abilities or gain a passive bonus to your current abilities. 
Due to there only being 7 talents to choose from as your team levels from 1 to 20, they have a much larger impact to the game when unlocked, in comparison to gaining ability upgrades every level in other MOBAs. One thing that is similar though is how the team that unlocks their ultimate abilities first have a huge advantage over their opposition. In Heroes, your ultimate ability is unlocked at level 10 as your fourth talent, and due to it having such a long cooldown in comparison to your other abilities, they're capable of some game-changing damage or healing when used. Another new feature that's been added to the game is the ability to use mounts, which as far as I'm aware hasn't been done before in any other MOBAs. This speeds up the process of getting into combat and makes the game feel much more fast paced throughout, which I personally enjoy. The largest and most game defining part of Heroes of the Storm though has to be its focus on objectives. Currently in the closed beta there's 7 unique maps each of which has a primary objective that both teams must fight to control. The team that controls these objectives are given a huge boost to their sieging capabilities, from a curse making the enemy team's defences useless, to an assault ship that fires explosives at enemy towers. The team that wins the objectives will most likely go on to win the game. Each map also has side objectives called mercenary camps, which when defeated will help you push lanes. This creates some interesting decision making in game, as teams can choose to skip the primary objective in favour of picking up the mercenary camps, which if left unchecked can deal a large amount of siege damage to the enemy team. These core mechanical features of Heroes of the Storm forces you to work together as a team if you want to win, and due to the strategic advantage of having these objectives, mixed with the short cooldown of which they can be contested over, you'll find that team fights are more common and more important in Heroes than any other game in the genre. Another thing worth mentioning is that with the objective focused team gameplay and gold system removed in Heroes, an act known as feeding that's played the MOBA scene for years has been somewhat nullified in Heroes of the Storm. In fact, dying is nothing more than a setback and only rewards the enemy team with a small amount of XP. This for me helps create a less toxic environment for new players. Toxicity in the community is something that MOBAs are well known for. If you suck at League of Legends or Dota 2 then oh boy, your team will sure let you know about it to the point where some people feel intimidated or put off from solo queuing. Blizzard made the decision early on to remove cross-team chat in an attempt to reduce toxicity, and they're currently experimenting with some honor-based systems that reward good players in the community. From my own experience in the Heroes of the Storm beta, I haven't seen much toxic behaviour at all so far, but that could just be because it's still in beta. I also think it has to do with how quick games are. A typical game in Heroes lasts around 20 minutes, with extremes peaking at 30 to 35 minutes. If your team's losing, the game doesn't drag on as long compared to other MOBAs simply because it can't due to how powerful the objectives are. It's not possible to have an hour long game unless everyone decides to ignore the objectives. The next thing I should mention is that Heroes of the Storm has the same business model as League of Legends, where the core game is free to play but you can choose to spend money to unlock heroes that aren't available on the free roster for that week, or if you haven't saved up enough in-game currency known as gold to buy them in-game. There's also a variety of skins and cosmetic items that are also available to buy, with prices ranging from $5 to $15. In terms of game modes, Heroes of the Storm has the fairly standard options of Practice, Quick Match, Cooperative, Hero League, Team League and Custom Games, which you'd expect from other similar games. The final thing I want to mention about Heroes of the Storm is how beautiful the game looks. Everything from the character models and maps right down to the user interface have amazing graphical fidelity that's easy to navigate and identify as a Blizzard product. It's definitely one of the best looking MOBAs to date in terms of graphics and art style. So now we've taken a look at how Heroes of the Storm hopes to differentiate itself from other games in the genre, now it's time to answer the question, could this be the next big MOBA? Well to answer that question we need to take a look at what makes games such as League of Legends and Dota 2 successful. They're both highly competitive, free to play and have a high skill cap and meta game that's fun to spectate and play once you've got over the steep learning curve. Heroes of the Storm is also highly competitive and free to play, but it does have less of a skill cap compared to League and Dota. This does however mean the game's more accessible and easy to pick up for people new to the genre. If we were to ask the question, will Heroes of the Storm kill League of Legends and Dota 2, the answer would obviously be no. Those games are played and enjoyed for their complexity, and someone going from Dota 2 to Heroes of the Storm would feel like it's a massive step back as what they're used to is far more complex, skill based and rewarding. However, there's a huge amount of casual gamers in the market that do want to play MOBA games, but they've been put off by the toxicity in the community and the steep, punishing learning curve that most MOBAs typically have. 
Heroes of the Storm doesn't suffer with this, and right off the bat you can have fun with the game no matter what your skill and experience. The truth is, Heroes of the Storm doesn't even seem like it's trying to compete with League of Legends and Dota. Instead it's taken elements from the MOBA genre to try and become something completely different in itself. Something Blizzard are calling a team brawler, and having played Heroes of the Storm extensively, I found it to be one of the most enjoyable, fun and addictive games I've ever played. In a time where game studios are all trying to grab a piece of the MOBA cash cow by making their own versions of what's already successful, Blizzard Entertainment have gone in a totally new direction, potentially crafting a new subgenre of game in the process. As someone that plays both League of Legends and Dota 2, I still find the urge to play Heroes of the Storm whenever I've got a spare half an hour or so. Why? Because it feels like a totally different game, and the reasons I love Heroes of the Storm are totally different from the reasons I enjoy League and Dota, and that's the reason I believe Heroes of the Storm will become an incredibly successful game. It's something that can be enjoyed by everyone, it's fun to play, entertaining to spectate, has stunning graphics, and most importantly, is highly accessible for anyone that wants to give it a try. Heroes of the Storm is currently in its beta and is expected to release mid-2015. When it does, I definitely recommend giving it a try. What have you got to lose? It's free to play after all. Did you enjoy the video? If you did, please hit that like button as it really helps out the channel. Also, let me know if you want to see more Heroes of the Storm content from me in the future, because I'm having a hell of a lot of fun playing it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.